Okay. Uh, my name's Kristen Toidwell. I see some familiar faces, um, but for those of you that haven't met me, I am the PA that works with um, Dr. Chatwell. So I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you are our patients. Some of you may not be. Maybe you heard about this through another way, but welcome. Um, I'm assuming some of you have osteoarthritis and some of you have rheumatoid arthritis and some of you have both, and, and we're gonna kind of talk about that um, tonight. When I come up with these talks, I try to think of what is a conversation that I have with my patients over and over and over again. And, and this is one, this, this is a very common conversation. So it's gonna be really laid back. If you guys have questions, just ask. I purposely made it where we will have plenty of time at the end to ask questions, so just, um, just let me know. All right, so this is how you feel when you come into the office, right? I'm hurting, I'm hurting, I'm hurting. And then my job is to figure out why you're hurting because there's different reasons, and then therefore there's different ways to treat it. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky, because if we guess wrong and we treat wrong, then you're still hurting for longer. So the whole purpose of this talk is to empower you, to start to be able to tell the difference between I'm hurting. Am I hurting because of my osteoarthritis, or am I hurting because of my rheumatoid arthritis? Because I spend so much time with patients. I get 30 minutes with you guys. And I spend 20 of that just trying to figure out why you're hurting, and then probably seven more minutes trying to convince you why I'm right, and then I have three minutes to try to fix you. So if you can walk in and already have somewhat of an idea, you're gonna only help us, your doctors and your PAs and your, and your nurse practitioners. So that is the purpose. So this is the question I I get a lot. Well, which one do I have? Rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis? And then even more often, I say, well, you have both. And then they have this look in their eye like, what do you mean I have both? And they're 85 years old and nobody has ever told them that they've had osteoarthritis. So then we have to go through all of that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What is the difference? So both rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis affect the joints, right? They both cause pain and stiffness. We know that. We're hurting. Ow, ow, ow. Um, but the cause behind the symptoms is different and that's where it gets a little bit tricky because then that's where it gets tricky when trying to figure out how to make you feel better. Osteoarthritis is the mechanical wear and tear on the joint and we'll, we'll talk more about what that means. Rheumatoid arthritis is completely different. It is an autoimmune thing. Um, basically your body's immune system is confused and it is attacking your joints. So totally different wear and tear autoimmune. So osteoarthritis, <coughs> or OA. So if I say OA, you know I mean osteo, right? If I say RA, we'll hold up cards later, it'll be like a cheer. So OA is a chronic condition characterized by the breakdown of the joint's cartilage. Well, what is cartilage? Cartilage is the cushion between the space and between your joints. So between every bone, 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 is a joint, right? Well, those bones aren't sitting on top of each other. There's a cushion in there, and that's your cartilage. We all have it. As time goes on, though, the breakdown of the cartilage causes the bones to rub against each other, and that is what hurts. That causes the stiffness, that causes the pain, and then the loss of, of movement. I can't extend my elbow. I can't reach my arm all the way up. I can't bend my knees back the way I, the way I used to. So here's some pictures because some people are more visualized learners. Um, and I probably stole this illegally from whatever shutter stock is, so don't worry about that. So here is a healthy knee, okay? Here is a bad knee. This white in here, that's your cartilage, right? So this is your thigh bone, your upper leg bone. This is your lower leg bone, and then this is your knee joint. And in between all that is this nice cushion, this cartilage. What happens with osteoarthritis is that cartilage starts to break down. And then, you see how it's kind of scraggly and, and the bones are starting to sit closer together and then you even have that exposed bone there which is what starts hurting. So that's kind of a visual for osteo. If that doesn't help you, maybe this will help you. This is a good knee. This is a bad knee. This knee, all of this space right there, that's cartilage that's in there. You just can't see that on an x-ray, right? You can only see bone. That is not a whole lot of cartilage. 
whereas over here, they still have a little bit. That hurts right there. When those bones are touching, that, that's, that's, a painful, that's a painful knee. Again, that's osteoarthritis. There's another really bad knee. These are the kind of x-rays you pull up and you kind of cringe. So normal knee over here, you've got your cartilage still, not a normal knee over here. You've got bone on bone. We would call that a stage four osteoarthritis. There is no stage five. So once you hit stage four, you're bone on bone. And then if those don't help you, sometimes cartoons do. Um, so these little guys are the, the cartilage and they're holding up the, the joint so they're not touching each other and this guy's breaking down and he's saying, no, I can't do it alone. So as these start breaking down, this bone starts to fall onto that bone and then that's what hurts, osteoarthritis. So what is rheumatoid arthritis? Again, it's an autoimmune disease in which your body's immune system, which is normally protecting against your health by attacking foreign substances like bacteria and viruses, mistakenly attacks your joints. So we all have an immune system. And whenever you get exposed to a virus or a bacterial infection or something like that, your immune system amps up and attacks that so that you don't get sick. Your immune system is on hyperdrive when you have rheumatoid arthritis and it's confused. And it thinks that your joints is a foreign body and it attacks your joints. Then what happens is this causes inflammation of the tissue that lines the inside of the joints. That's called your synovium. That is completely different than your cartilage. So you may have heard your rheumatologist use the word like synovitis or um, synovial fluid. That's what's inflamed in rheumatoid arthritis. It's not the cartilage, it's the synovium. So it's inflamed, then it causes swelling, and that's really painful. And eventually, if that happens long enough, then that leads to bone erosion and then joint deformity. So a lot going on on this slide and it can be really confusing, but all you really need to focus on is the purple. Let's see, so over here, you've got normal, right? So this blue in here, that's cartilage. If you notice, normal knee, or I don't know what joint that's supposed to be actually, normal whatever that is, and then abnormal rheumatoid, the cartilage is never affected, right? Because we're not talking about cartilage. We're talking about the purple. That's your synovial fluid and your synovial membrane. And then over here is a rheumatoid arthritis that's flaring. That synovial fluid is swollen, the joint is swollen, and then you can even tell right up here, it's kind of an exaggerated erosion. They're never that giant. But that's an erosion where it actually starts affecting the, the bone and it starts taking little bites out of the bone. So here's another visualization to give you another idea. Same thing on the left, normal joint. There's your synovial fluid. It looks fine. There's your cartilage. All of that looks fine. Here's rheumatoid arthritis. Again, your cartilage is fine because it's not osteo. It's that red in here. It's that synovial fluid that is inflamed. And it says bone erosion. That's not a bone erosion. That's a bone erosion right there. Well, essentially, it's helping to kind of keep everything lubed up, basically. Um, <coughs> and then if you go back to, and this is a totally different talk, um, basically what we've learned with rheumatoid arthritis is there's a, there's a ton of different things happening. We used to think it was just one thing, but there's a ton, all of this stuff in here is happening that's getting inflamed. And we know now now that's why we have all this great medicine, because it attacks it from different angles. Some of it's attacking it from, you know, the anti-TNFs are over here. Some of it's an IL-6 is over here. So basically what they're figuring out is they're targeting all these different ways to combat your rheumatoid arthritis. And for some people, they respond better when you combat these cells or these cells or these cells. Yeah, that's tricky. You can. Yeah, which is which is really confusing because here in a little bit, I'm going to show you this giant chart and it's going to talk about how swelling only happens with rheumatoid arthritis and not typically osteo. But with the knees and with some other joints, if you have osteoarthritis, you can't have fluid on it. And that can make it confusing when you roll into our office and you have a giant knee. That's why we do fluid aspiration. So your doctor or your favorite PA 
will use a needle, and they will pull fluid off of your knee. and then we run back to the lab, and we look at it under a microscope, and that will tell you if it's inflammatory fluid you know it's your rheumatoid um or if it's related to your osteoarthritis. so yes, good question. you can get fluid on your knee even from osteoarthritis. so here's some x-rays of rheumatoid of the feet. so over here are your feet. these guys right here, these are called your NTP joints. Um, that is where rheumatoid arthritis likes to settle. And it's not the faraway joints of your toes. I don't have really great balance, but I'll just show you with my feet. So it's not these guys way out here. Sorry about my booties. Okay? It's these guys. They're higher up. So if you have a rheumatologist and you come see us and we do your joint count, you'll notice that when we're pushing, we're actually pushing higher up. And I remember the first time I was learning, I was like, there are no, that's weird, there's no joints up there. But that's where your MTP joints are, and that's where your rheumatoid arthritis likes to go, okay? So these are good, good MTP. There are good, good joint spaces there. This is, um, this is bad. So these, like right here, that's an erosion, how it looks like a little rat bite almost. That's somebody who has had rheumatoid arthritis for a long time and they're not well controlled. So you've got the erosions. Then these little kind of, I describe them kind of like moth-eaten appearance. Those are called cysts. And that's the, uh, the cysts come first, right? So first it's the cystic changes that we see. And then those cystic changes turn into erosions. That's rheumatoid arthritis. And you notice that looks completely different than the osteoarthritis from those knee x-rays that I was showing you. Here's another one. So this is the hand, obviously. This is your wrist joints. So your wrists in here is made up of a lot of little tiny, little tiny bones right through there. And this is a good wrist. This is a bad wrist. So there's your moth-eaten appearance, right? Over here, here's some erosions. Let's see, there's more erosions up in here. There's a cystic change. All of this is really cystic in through here and through here. And also, you can tell, you know, you can see the lines really well. You can tell the difference between all those little bones. And through here, it's just kind of getting all smushed together. That's rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so, again, osteoarthritis is the wear and tear arthritis. We're all going to get it. Um, some of us will get it a little worse than others, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Family history, you know, what kind of abuse have you done to your joints? Um, but everyone is going to get some form of osteoarthritis as they get older. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, obviously, we're not all going to get rheumatoid arthritis, and that goes back to your immune system. And so, yes, you can have both. And realistically, there will come a time in your life, well, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, you're eventually also going to have osteoarthritis. And then it gets really confusing when you don't feel good and you're hurting, and then you have to figure out, well, which one, which one hurts. We could spend probably a whole week talking about, about this chart. And what we're going to do is, because it's very overwhelming, we're going to go through it step by step. But the whole purpose of this is when I walk into a room and I'm asking you these really annoying, very specific questions, it's, this is the thought process that I'm going through. And this is what your doctor and your nurse practitioner and your PA is trying to go through. These questions, if you're a patient in our office, you've seen them a lot because you see them on our paperwork when you check in every single time. The nurses are going to ask you, and then I'm going to walk in, and I'm going to ask you again. But the reason we're asking you this is because it gives us a clue as to, is this rheumatoid? Is it osteo? Are you doing OK? So step by step. Rheumatoid arthritis, how does it start? It can start any time in your life, meaning you could be 10, and you could come down with rheumatoid arthritis. You could be 60. I've seen it when you're 80. So any, any age in life. Osteoarthritis usually begins later in life. I'm not going to see a 15-year-old come in with osteoarthritis of their, of their knees, right? Um, so that sometimes, just by looking at the patient's chart and seeing their age, sometimes that can already narrow some stuff down for us. Speed of onset. So my joints are hurting. OK, well, when did this start? Well. Rheumatoid arthritis is a relatively rapid onset, meaning 
three days ago, I woke up and, oh my gosh, my knee was huge and swollen and red and hot, and we'll talk about all that. But it, it came on rather quickly. You know, we'll see patients for the first time, and they've never been diagnosed, and they eventually make their way to our office, right? They started at urgent care, and then they went to their family practice, and they got referred to orthopedics, and they finally ended up with us. And we'll go through their history. And well, when did it start? Well, about two months ago. I never had joint pain before, and then all of a sudden this started. So relatively rapid onset. Whereas, if somebody comes in with osteoarthritis, my back hurts. Well, when did that start? Well, honestly, it's probably been there for the last 10 years, and it's just steadily getting worse. That's osteo. Slowly, slowly kind of creeps up on you, not in all of a sudden pinpointed exactly to the day. So with rheumatoid, the, the joints are painful, right? We talked about that. They're swollen. Now, we already discussed, right, how it can be a little confusing because other joints can swell with osteo, but for the most part, swollen joints, that makes me think of a, a rheumatoid before it makes me think of, of an osteo. Um, they're red, they're hot, and they're stiff, okay? A red hot joint, that's, that's not osteoarthritis. Um, with osteoarthritis, your joints ache and they're a little tender, but you have little or no swelling. And again, knees can be a little different and some of the other joints can be a little different. But to make this as, as textbook as possible, for the most part, you usually do not have much swelling with osteoarthritis. So this is the other thing, and again, if you've been in our office, you know that we use those little stick figures, and I'll show you a picture of it coming up, and we sit there and we talk about, you know, what joint hurts, know specifically what joint hurts, and then we color it on our little stick man, and then, you know, we calculate all the swollen joints and the tender joints, and, and we look for patterns, because it does matter what joint specifically hurts, because rheumatoid arthritis likes a certain joint, whereas osteoarthritis likes a certain joint, and it gives us clues. So with rheumatoid arthritis, it often affects these small and large joints. So what does that mean? Small joints would be like the fingers, the wrists. Large joints would be hips, the knees, the shoulders. A lot of times when people first come in, it's very symmetrical, meaning they come into our office for the first time, and last month, all of a sudden, you know, I started getting swelling across here and across here. And when we're doing our little stick man, it is it is symmetrical, or it's, it's both knees and both shoulders, right? Now, that's typically when somebody first comes in and they're diagnosed. Now, if any of you have rheumatoid arthritis and you've had a flare before, you know it doesn't have to be symmetrical, right? It could just be the elbow, or it could just be this toe here and this finger here. So it's not always symmetrical. It's just that classic textbook when you first come in and you finally get that diagnosis, it, it a lot of times presents that way. Um, osteoarthritis typically begins on one side of the body, usually the side that is used more. So if you're, if you're right-handed, you're usually right-legged, and so a lot of times it's, it's kind of all on that side, meaning you're going to wear your knee out, your right knee out first before you wear out your left one. Um, it typically involves the finger joints, but different finger joints, and this is where it comes into play when we're really nitpicky. It really likes the I put on there the far away joints. We call them the distal joints. So distal being far away. Far away joints being the ones by your fingernails. So it really likes these guys, and it really likes these guys in the middle. Whereas rheumatoid arthritis really likes these guys and these guys. So if somebody comes in and says, this one right here is hurting, I already know that's not your rheumatoid arthritis. That's your osteoarthritis. So it really likes the, the far away ones. It likes the large weight bearing joints like your hips and your knees, and it likes the spine. And why did I underline that? The spine is your back, right? If somebody comes in and says, Whew, my rheumatoid arthritis is not well controlled. My back has been killing me for the past week. That's not your rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis does not affect your back. That's something else. And then we have to dive into, well, what is that something else? So that's a big clue. Now, to make things more confusing, because I don't want you to walk into Dr. Valente's office and say, Kristen told me my rheumatoid arthritis won't affect my back. There are two cervical spine, cervical spine is your neck, that rheumatoid arthritis can go after and attack. It's very, very uncommon anymore. This was back before we had really great medicine, and, and it was a lot more common to see it up in the, we call it the C-spine. 
Dr. Chatwell and I were talking about this the other day, and he said, it used to be we always had to do these very specific x-rays on rheumatoid arthritis patients um, to check their, their cervical spine. He said, we never do that anymore, because we never see it anymore, because we have such great medicine, it doesn't ever affect the cervical spine. So I say osteoarthritis is in the back and rheumatoid isn't, but now you know rheumatoid can affect the cervical spine. It's just very, very uncommon. Here's a question that you've probably been asked a million and ten times if you come to our office. Oh, I know you're stiff. Well, how long does that last for? The magic number is one hour, and this is textbook, right? Not everybody's textbook. But with rheumatoid arthritis, usually your morning stiffness, I just got out of bed, I can't really move around, I'm really stiff, usually that lasts for longer than an hour. Whereas osteoarthritis, usually within an hour you can get loosened up. Um, so if somebody comes in and says, I'm really stiff in the morning, okay, well how long does that last? Whew, well, you know, about five minutes and then I'm feeling a little better. Okay, in my head I'm thinking that's not rheumatoid, that's probably your osteoarthritis. <coughs> We call this a, a systemic effect, so when it affects kind of that whole body. When you have rheumatoid arthritis, especially when you're first diagnosed and you're just flaring all over the place, you can have that systemic effect where you just feel sick and you're fatigued. Um, you just feel kind of fluish, some people will describe it, but I get this a lot. Even sometimes when people are, are about to have a flare, they can start to pick up on, I've just been a lot more tired. Than, than I used to be. Rheumatoid arthritis will do that. It will affect your whole body. Osteoarthritis does not typically do that. Do you hurt? Yes. Are you stiff? Yes. But it's not an all over, I feel ill, I've been more fatigued, that kind of thing. And then, I threw this one on there in the end, because um, these are all different clues that we look for, right? So one of the clues that we look for when we're trying to discern what's going on is we do blood tests, right? Every time you're in, you always get the same, the same blood work done. Um, with rheumatoid arthritis, you're going to have elevated inflammatory markers. So a CRP or a SED rate, an ESR is, is a SED rate. Um, and if you're a rheumatoid patient, you've heard that word a lot. Oh, your inflammatory markers look really good. Or hey, your CRP is really high. So you're going to have elevated inflammatory markers. Now, to make things even more confusing, though, you can flare and you can have rheumatoid arthritis and your inflammatory markers can be completely negative, which is so frustrating for patients. They come in and they feel awful and then my nurse flips the computer screen around and, oh, well, your labs look great, <laughs> but I don't feel great. But if you have elevated inflammatory markers, I am more likely to think that you have rheumatoid arthritis than osteo, okay? Because osteo, you will not have elevated inflammatory markers. And I've seen this before. People will come in and I'm talking to them and I'm going through all my questions and in my head I'm thinking, this is their osteoarthritis. It's just, it's their osteoarthritis, their Remicade's fine or their Methotrexate's fine or whatnot. And then I'll flip up and look at my lab results and their CRP will be 8.5. And oh, okay, now I'm paying attention a little bit more. I think that's your rheumatoid. I gotta go back and ask you some more questions. So inflammatory markers. And then here is, which we were talking about earlier, um, an RF is a rheumatoid factor, and a CCP is the, actually an anti-CCP antibody. What does that mean? These are just other blood tests that we do. And this is not blood tests that we do every time you come in, right? I get that from a lot of people. I'm flaring, well, how's my rheumatoid factor? No, I don't check that every time you come in. We check that when you first come in and we're diagnosing you because it helps us give um, a firm diagnosis of what we're dealing with. And with rheumatoid arthritis, you will have a positive rheumatoid factor and a positive CCP, but not all the time. And again, that's a completely different talk and very confusing. But if somebody walks in and their joints are hurting and I went through all my history of this and this and this and this and then I pull their labs up and their CRP is high and their SED rate is high and their rheumatoid factor is high and then I add a CCP on it, it's high, I know what you have. You have rheumatoid arthritis, that's not osteoarthritis. So these are just more clues for, for us, your, your provider. And again, with osteo, you don't have inflammatory markers and you, you don't have a rheumatoid factor or a CCP. Okay, welcome to medical school. That was, that was a whole month in PA school. All right, so a lot of information, but again, and I don't expect you to remember any of it, really. 
mostly just i want you to realize that when your doctor or your nurse practitioner or your pa or the nurse is asking you these questions, it's because we're trying to gather up clues to figure out what's going on and when you start hurting, you can kind of ask yourself this stuff. Is it red? Is it hot? Is it swollen? Did it come on all of a sudden three days ago or has this kind of been creeping up on me over the winter? Is it my knee joint? Is it my wrist joint? Is it my far away little finger joints? And that can kind of give you a clue as to what, um, what could be going on. Okay, so this, again, if you're a patient in our office, you've seen the stick man. And I tried to find one that I liked and I couldn't find any, so I just put up three crappy ones. <laughs> so this is, what, um, this is what we use to, um, to color on. When you come in and say, I'm hurting, and then I say, well, where specifically? And then you just want to punch me in the face because you just hurt all over and you don't want to tell me specifically. Then we get down to the nitty gritty. And you say, well, my wrists are hurting, and I'll say, well, where on your wrist is hurting? And then you'll say, well, these little bumps over here. Okay, well, that's important. That's your ulnar styloids. Rheumatoid arthritis likes your ulnar styloids, so that's a clue to me. Or you'll say, no, it's all these little far away guys down here. Well, we know that's osteoarthritis, right? Or you'll say, oh, nope, it's in right through here in my back. Okay, well, that's not your rheumatoid arthritis, I know that. But what we do, is we go in, if you've ever wondered why, you know, Dr. Chatwell is very meticulous and he colors those circles in just perfectly. What is he doing? Well, when we go back later and we're dictating in your chart, we're gonna talk about every single joint and if it was swollen. And not just was it swollen, but how swollen. We have a rating system for that. And was it tender? Okay, well, how tender? Because we have a rating system for that. And did they have good range of motion? No? Okay, well, how much range? I mean, we're talking meticulous here because we track that. So then the next time you come in, okay, I know last time you had an S3, which means super swollen, and a T3, which means super tender joint, and I can compare. Well, now you only have an S1 and a T1, and I can compare and see how you're, how you're doing. So it's not just where did I color it in, but I'm also documenting how swollen and how tender you are. And then at the end of this, I can look at my little coloring sheet and it will give me an idea. If I have a ton of stuff lit up, something's not good, right? Either I need to be adjusting your rheumatoid arthritis medicine or adjusting your osteoarthritis medicine. Um, but this is what we're doing when we're coloring on those little stick figure drawings, okay? Okay, pop quiz. So that's the talk. I don't even know what time it is. How are we doing, Steve? Steven, wake up. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to quiz you, and we're going to play pretend. And I'm going to read off some stories about patients. None of them are real, but these are all things that I hear every single day. And then you're going to tell me what's wrong with them. Is it their rheumatoid, or is it? Oh, you're, she's excited. Yeah. You're looking at face. Okay. So this is Bob. Bob has RA and OA, so he has rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Bob is 57 years old, all of these are clues. Bob is 57 years old and works on his feet all day at the factory. He enjoys hunting pheasant with his dog, Tank. We do have a dog at home named Tank, by the way. That's how he got thrown in there. He comes in today with complaints of low back pain and knee pain, both which have bothered him for years. However, this winter, the knees seem to be more bothersome, noting crunching and pain with going down the stairs. He denies any swelling or redness to his joints. He's stiff in the morning when he wakes up, but this resolves within 10 minutes of walking downstairs and getting his coffee. When he drives to go hunting early in the morning, he's stiff when he gets out of the truck. By the time he gets out in the field, he feels better. He wonders if his rheumatoid arthritis medication is working. What's wrong with Bob? Oh, medical degrees for all of you. He has OA. So, what are some of the clues? He's 57. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's, it's just a clue, okay? He's 57. He works on his feet all day. So, we kind of talked about how everyone, as we get older, we're all going to get some form of osteoarthritis. But if you have more wear and tear to your joints, you're going to wear out your cartilage faster. So, whether you work on your feet all day, you do heavy lifting, you're a professional baseball player, you know, anything where you are constantly using your joints, you're gonna wear them out, as compared to a 57-year-old who has worked at a desk all of his life. 
I don't know. What do you do at a desk? You just sit there. I don't know what he's doing. But anyways, he's not wearing out his joints. So that was the clue there, that he's on his feet all day. He works in a factory. He's also active, right? He likes to go hunting with his dog. Um, he's complaining of back pain, right? We learned today, if you learn anything, you know that back pain is not his rheumatoid arthritis. So that's a clue. Knee pain could go either way, right? That could be either way. Um, but the other big clue is this has been going on for years, OK? If I ask someone, oh, you're hurting. Well, how long has that been bothering you for? Oh, probably about 10 years. OK, well, that's different than a flare, because a flare is going to be an acute onset. Um, I highlighted the winter thing, and I think anybody can attest to this. Um, your joints hurt more in the winter, right? And that's pretty classic for, for osteoarthritis. Um, and I know I have some rheumatoids that would argue the same thing. I think rheumatoid arthritis can be more difficult in the winter. I've had some people say, really, just the change in weather is hard for them, whether you're going cold to hot or, or hot to cold. And then once they get it all straightened out, they're doing better. Um, but the winter is, is definitely harder for osteoarthritis. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 10 minutes of morning stiffness, right? So we're looking for that magic one hour or greater. 10 minutes of morning stiffness, that's not a flare from your rheumatoid arthritis. That, that's your, your osteoarthritis. And then I threw this in there. He gets stiff when he gets out of, the, out of the truck. And I'm sure a lot of people can attest to that. I hear that a lot because you'll drive into town to see us. I was doing really good, and then I got out of my car to get, uh, you know, walk into your parking lot, and oh, I was just stiff all over. Okay, well, how long did that last? Well, by the time I got in here, I felt better. And then I also hear that, well, I've been sitting here so long waiting for you that by the time I got up, I'm like, Meh, okay. Um, so that is pretty classic for, for osteoarthritis as well. Um, okay, so they should have prefaced this in the beginning, which I think you already figured out. We're not talking about treatment. Um, today. I, I thought about throwing it in here, but honestly, we would be here all night long and you would be completely overwhelmed by the time you left and then you would get nothing out of the talk. Treatment is hard because it's so different for, for everybody. You know, some people can take an NSAID and some people can take methotrexate and some people can take Remicade. So we're not diving into treatment today and I hope you're not disappointed by that. If you can just grasp what's happening here, if you're Bob and you already know that it's your osteoarthritis, by the time you walk into Dr. Churchill's office and you sit down and talk with him and he comes in, you're ready to go. I know that it's my osteo. Here's what's going on. Let's not waste time trying to figure it out. Now tell me, tell me how to make myself feel better. So that's kind of the, the whole purpose. All right, we're going again. This is Pam. Pam has RA and OA. She's a 65-year-old retired kindergarten teacher, so she's actually a saint is what that means. She comes in today with complaints of right and left hand pain that started two days ago. She awoke with pain across her knuckles, right, so across here, and her wrist, and she has swelling. She has trouble making a fist because she doesn't have that range of motion, and she has pain when she turns the key in the ignition, that, that twisting motion. She feels like it takes her about two hours to limber up in the morning. She feels fatigued. She's been under increased stress. Oh, by the way, my mom recently passed away and we're trying to get dad into a nursing home. What is wrong with Pam? All right. You guys are really good at this. Okay, so what are your, um, what are your clues? Well, the two days ago is a big thing, right? All of a sudden, I know exactly when it started. It started two days ago. She's having swelling and it's those classic those classic spots, right? The knuckle, the wrist, specifically that little bump right over here, that's your ulnar styloid, right? Um, these are things that I hear a lot. Trouble making a fist, right? That's a big complaint when you're really stiff. Turning the key in the ignition. I've had some people come in. I had one lady, bless her heart, it took her forever to finally make her way to our office, but she couldn't do her hair because she couldn't do this. She couldn't raise her arms up overhead, so her 12-year-old was basically getting her dressed every morning. She couldn't reach back behind her to get her bra because she couldn't move her shoulders. She couldn't um, do the, the seat belt. When she would take her kids to school, they would have to buckle her in. And then when she would take drop her last kid off, he would have to unbuckle her. Otherwise, she would be stuck in the car all day. And then she'd just drive home. Oh, it's really sad. Um, key in the ignition. That's a really, really common one because it's that twisting motion with the, with the wrist. Um, two hours of morning stiffness. So there's your magic, magic morning stiffness. There's the fatigue, that systemic effect. It's kind of attacking her whole body. And we didn't mention this, but um, stress is a huge um, trigger 
for a flare for rheumatoid arthritis. It, it just it suppresses your immune system, and that stress can be that you've been sick. That stress can be you know stuff going on at home. But a lot of times I'll walk in and I'll see a patient who is always so well controlled, and I don't know why I'm flaring. Well, what's what's going on? Oh, my daughter's getting married, and my son just graduated, and mom's been sick, and I'm like, well, that's probably why. So stress can um, can have that effect for sure. Stress is not going to trigger your osteoarthritis. All right, Tammy has RA and OA. She's 77 years old. She's a grandma of seven, and she enjoys knitting. She comes in today with complaints of pain at the base of both of her thumbs. So what does that mean? It's down here, okay? So that right there is a big clue. If I walk in and somebody says I'm hurting here, well, that could be one thing. But if they say I'm hurting way down here at the base of their thumb, that, that's, that's a big clue right there for me. Her right is worse than her left. She notices difficulty getting her grandson out of her car seat. I hear that a lot from the grandmas. She has a hard time opening up jars as she feels like her hands are weaker. She notices that she can't knit as long as she used to, which used to be hours at a time, as her thumbs will hurt worse. She started to notice bumps along her faraway finger joint. So those are your distal ones, right? So these are these guys over here. She's starting to notice some changes and she's worried that her RA is getting worse. So I asked her some further questions. She denies any joint swelling. She feels like heat does help her hands when they ache and they feel stiff and she thinks that Tylenol is kind of beneficial. What's wrong with her? No way. Man, I wish I had candy or something I could just throw out into the crowd. I know, right? Well, that's a good question. You And, and yeah, we can are similar are similar to that yeah and the thumb yeah so the thumb joint that so this is and again this is textbook right not everybody reads the textbook and doesn't follow the the rules so typically with the thumb the the ra can get can get this guy out here and he can get this guy and you know it's tender when you push on it right when you go all the way down here to the true base of the thumb RA does not affect that. Now that's a big OA spot, osteoarthritis, because realistically, our thumb joints were not originally made to be used as often as we use them. This is a joint that people wear out pretty quickly. Um, so that's a very common osteo complaint. And then, you know, that difficulty getting the, the car seat, being able to push it. And yes, with rheumatoid, you will have the weakness as well. Um, you know, the, the difficulty, you know, unscrewing the, the pickle jar and, and all that, that's pretty common with, with osteoarthritis. Um, you know, she used to be able to knit for hours at a time. Well, that hurts her hands more, so not being able to, to do that activity. The far away bumps on the, on the finger joints, that's not a rheumatoid arthritis nodule, right? Because we know that now. We know that these joints, these far away guys, rheumatoid doesn't affect that. That's her osteo, and osteo can cause nodules or you know bumps, whatever you whatever you want to call it. So that is her osteoarthritis. <clears throat> okay, by now you know what's going on because I realize I did the same pattern over and over again. But I threw this one in here because I think it's good, especially if you don't have rheumatoid arthritis. I think it's good to kind of see what a rheumatoid looks like, especially when they first present. Um, so this is Jamie. She's 25 years old and a new mom. She has a two-month-old daughter at home. This is not what a new mom with a two-month-old daughter looks like, by, by the by. But I couldn't find anybody with bags in her eyes that hadn't showered in a couple days and had a baby spitting up on her. So we're going to use Jamie over here with her baby Bajorn. Um, at about six weeks postpartum, Jamie started developing knee stiffness that later evolved into swelling, redness, and heat of both knees. She later started having trouble with the balls of her feet hurting. She has trouble putting on shoes as any pressure around the end of her feet are painful. She has difficulty getting out of bed in the morning and her husband has to help her limp into the bathroom. She has a hard time getting up from the toilet seat. Her husband also has to help her get into the shower as a hot shower is helpful. She admits her stiffness typically lasts until one or two in the afternoon, but it never completely resolves. She feels better if she stays active all day and dreads having to sit longer than five minutes as she knows she will get stiff again. By the way, her mom has rheumatoid arthritis, ding, ding, ding. 
And now her labs are back and her inflammatory markers were checked today and her CRP was 10 with a normal of 0 0.8 and her ESR, which is your sedimentation rate or your sed rate, a normal is less than 30 and she was at 82. Her rheumatoid factor and her anti-CCB antibody were positive. What's wrong with Jamie? Congratulations, Jamie, you have rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So, the age, right? No 25-year-old comes in with complaints of osteoarthritis, typically. Um, six weeks postpartum, I threw this in there. This is, um, this is a pretty common time when we see women and they're first diagnosed. You know, you, you had the baby, you're, everything's calming down, your hormones are calming down, your immune system all of a sudden goes berserko, and now you have rheumatoid arthritis. So that, that is not uncommon by any means. Of course, you know about the swelling and the redness and the heat. You're well versed on that. The balls of the feet. So this goes back to those MTP joints, right? These, these way up here toe joints. Not really limber, so I can't really show you. <laughs> so it's these guys up here. So sometimes people will complain of pain at the, the top of those MTP joints, but more than not, it's pain at the ball of the foot. And my patients always ask, well, what's the ball of the foot? Don't worry, I'm going to take off my shoes and show you. So it's this area right here. So if you are standing on your tiptoes, right, you're standing on the ball of your foot. And that's where rheumatoid arthritis will hurt. And I hear this, you know, I, when I get out of the bed in the morning, sometimes I'm walking on my heels because the balls of my feet hurt so bad. Um, you know, the trouble putting on shoes. With osteoarthritis, and I just had somebody in today and we were talking about this. With osteoarthritis, when your feet hurt, a lot of times, you know, I could be using you, Steven. You could be my foot model right now. A lot of times, it's the, it's the top of the foot. Osteo really likes to settle kind of in the middle of that foot. So it's when you tie your shoes tight, you know, and that, that hurts like your tennis shoes. So a lot of times, people are looking for shoes kind of like this that don't sit as high. Or I've had some people come in and they just don't tie their shoes. They make it really loose. That's common for osteoarthritis. That's not where rheumatoid arthritis is going to be. So again, it's more clues. My feet hurt. Okay. Where do your feet hurt? No, specifically, as in put your finger on it, because that gives me a clue. So balls of the feet are a big one for rheumatoid. Difficulty getting out of bed. Now, you could argue with osteo that can be difficult to get out of bed too, right? But with her, she's got to limp into the bathroom. She's got to get trouble. She has trouble getting down on the toilet seat, trouble getting up off the toilet seat. Husband's got to help her into the shower. We're talking one or two in the afternoon. Um, until that stiffness kind of gets better. And I, and I hear that. And to me, because I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, I cannot imagine being stiff till one or two in the afternoon. And then honestly, just kind of being stiff all day. So again, that's not osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis does not last all day like that. Um, this is another one I hear from people. They would rather, once they are loosened up, they'd rather just keep going. They don't want to sit down because they know they're going to get stiff again, and then it's going to take them five hours to loosen back up. So they feel better if they can just stay up and stay active and keep moving. Her mom has rheumatoid arthritis. You don't have to have a mom. No, we all have moms. You don't have to have a mom with rheumatoid arthritis to have rheumatoid arthritis, right? But if I have somebody come in and they have all these symptoms, and oh, by the way, my mom has rheumatoid arthritis. I'm, I'm paying attention a little bit more. So there is, there is definitely a genetic component to it. Um, you guys know about those inflammatory markers now, right? Um, osteoarthritis is not going to have a CRP of 10. It's not going to have a sed rate of 82. It's sure not going to have a rheumatoid factor and an anti-CCP antibody that are positive. <clears throat> so it all goes back to, to this. And again, we could spend a lot more time on this. I, I could probably talk for a good hour just on the pattern of joints affected, um, meaning you know the ulnar styloids. That's 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 really rheumatoid, and, and the elbows and the shoulders, just because it gives us so many clues. But this is where all of our questions come from as your provider when we're trying to figure out what's going on, um, what's going on with you. So that is OA versus RA. Are we all? Comp <laughs> Are we all completely confused? No? Good. Questions? Because we got time. Go ahead. Yeah. 